Hello humans, welcome to Perspectives. This is a cinematic journey through architecture and design spaces where we discuss the past, the present, the future, the culture, the people and the life that wraps around it. Today we venture into the world of Maximilian Jenkwell. I was very lucky to be born in Venezuela, in Caracas. It's a beautiful country, it's a beautiful culture. I decided to come to Bali and, and doing a project. Obviously, I've lived here for 10 years and I find it interesting and I've learned so much about Balinese architecture, but I'm by no means a specialist or the most knowledgeable person in Balinese architecture. Inspired by Balinese or Indonesian crafts, and Indonesian architecture or elements of Indonesian architecture and locally inspired architecture. It is architecture that tries to use local materials and, and tries to take local shapes or forms or, or infuse it with something that makes it fit in to the environment. I have a circle. Because the circle is so easy to make it so easy. If it's about 15-16, we can cut it in two sides and it's black. The whole process of, of having, from, from finding the, the woods, getting it out where it is, oftentimes it's in the middle of the jungle in Borneo, like really deep down in there because it's a bridge. Getting it onto roads, so you need to get it on a lorry that needs to be big enough, and the roads need to be big enough to get it on there. You need to get it out there onto boats all the way into Bali through the legal process of having it everything checked. Until you have a final finished product that you can use on a construction site, the process is huge. I mean, it's, 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 people don't realize it. Getting a uh, semi processed, which is they pretty much give it uh, a, a, a thickness which is even then. So it goes into the planer and we get like a two centimeter, so that each piece is two centimeters thick. And then they put it in to another machine which will cut the edges so that the, the width is standardized. But the top, they're just cleaning it with the, with the water jet, just to clean it and get a lot of the dirt that's been in there for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's what they call here at, the, at this factory, they call it semi-processed. You know, when we're designing a home and we're using standardized woods, it's easier. We say, okay, we want all the joists to be five by 10, or, you know, like we give them a certain dimension and order it from a factory and that's the way it comes. When you're working with this, every single piece is different. And you need to account for that when you're designing. So it's a different approach. Coming here and setting up Studio Jenko was a manifestation of many things to unfold and, and, and to come still maybe. And um, one of them was obviously this love for nature and the tropics, um, this interest in vernacular architecture and learning from how people have built for hundreds of years and trying to, to integrate that into a contemporary way of building. So oh, this entrance here I'm very excited about because it took years to get to this maturity um, where it is now but it's, um, I love, I've, I'm not a landscaper or a trained landscaper but I really do love um, playing with the gardens and having that possibility to, to play, to be playful here and do this. It sounded like 
great opportunity for me to expand on what I had been building on with the arts. That's how the masters in, in interior design came to be at that point. I decided that that's the path I wanted to take. It's a beach club that we're doing down in, 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 on, on the coast, in, close to Changu in, in Batublik. Um, and we're developing this umbrella, which, um, as you can see, is vaguely inspired by the palm tree leaf. The idea is that it, you can see this wood here at the moment, we want to make it foldable. foldable. Initially, we wanted to do it completely foldable, like the, like the fans, you know, these hand fans, like the Chinese um, fans, fans that kind of fold together like that. But we're realizing that it's going to be technically quite challenging. So at the moment, it's just folding like a book. Most of it is Indonesian local materials, but then we used Italian marble to say, okay, well, we do have an element of Italy coming in here. We try to, wherever we are, whether it's a project here or it's a project in Europe, we try to um, work with local materials. That said, we don't make it a rule that it has to be 100% local. Ultimately, I'm somebody who's traveled around the world, so oftentimes we're trying to blend, or we'll bring in materials from outside, um, but it'll be a very small percentage and there'll be a reason for it. Well, it was for one the idea of vernacular, for another the closeness to nature yet still luxurious. Thirdly, this possibility of doing something that is good for the environment. And I started getting really interested in bamboo architecture at that time. And there was a architect in Colombia, Simon Vélez, that I, I was studying and, and uh, people would make fun of me at school because I was walking around with the same book. It was this book called Grow Your Own House and it was this idea that you can grow bamboo and build your house out of it. Because bamboo wasn't being used in Venezuela or isn't being used much in Venezuela and it's used, being used China, India, Indonesia, Colombia, many countries around the world are using it. And I, and I thought it was such a brilliant and great material. And I thought, why is nobody in Venezuela using it? And I'm gonna be the first one to use it. And this is the project in this curved shape. And it reaches up to nine meters. So we needed the building that was at least nine meters high. And I didn't want a building that stands out in the neighborhood and that you can see from everywhere. And so the best way was to do a building that really encompasses that trajectory of the shuttle cock. So, the motion of it. I feel like in all of my dreams are coming true on this island. For me, the most obvious thing to do was to break completely with everything that I knew at that point again and start something completely new. Putting myself into that challenge and coming to Bali, and this is where I'm, I'm starting something. And, and, and knowing that if I were to, that by doing that, it would force me to find, I would have to struggle and fight through a way, and this was gonna find, help me find myself as a designer and, and, and shape that voice. I think like any designer we go through periods and we go through an evolution and we go through a maturing process and it's something that is not static, it's something that is permanently movement. So I'm still thinking that I'm, you know, I'm in 40s, I'm still very young as a designer and architect or interior designer and I have the feeling that the next 20 years or 30 years are still going to see a big evolution in my work and in the way that I approach design and how I feel about design and how I feel about sustainability, and all these things are, are still in motion, they're liquid. Yeah. And, and, and so it's, it's, it's exciting to be in that process and being aware of that. Mm -hmm.